Today we are working on Excel Expert Lesson 2, the seventh lesson using date and time functions. So with the departure date calculator workbook open, you see that's what we have open. Select cell B3 and enter a date in the future of your choice. Uh, I'm going to put 08 26 2026. August 26, 2026. That's my birthday. So then we're going to use a function to obtain the current date and time, and it will automatically update itself over time. So select cell B4. We're going to type equals now, parentheses, parentheses, hit it, enter. Not sure why I had a minus sign there, but equals now, and that'll put your current day in there. Determine the day of the week for the departure date. This will be done in two steps using two different functions. So select cell C5. Type the first part of the formula, but don't press enter. So type equals weekday, starting parentheses, B3. Comma. And the weekday function returns a single number and identifies which day of the week of that date falls on. As a second argument that allows you to choose which numbering pattern to use, with Sunday being one as a default, the second argument is not specified. So you see I've got all these choices right here. So I'm going to finish the rest of the formula by entering 1 and then in parentheses, press enter. So mark that as answer and go to the next step. Select cell B5 and enter equals index parentheses D4 colon E10 comma C5 comma 2 in parentheses. Press enter. Mine says Wednesday. Select cell B7. And we're going to type equals B3 minus B4. You can also calculate the number of days difference between the two dates using a built-in function. However, it calculates in whole days. So this one right here, that's how many days between this date and this date. So yours is going to be different. So select cell C7, and we're going to type equals days, parentheses, B3, comma, B4, in parentheses. And it rounded that to 1763, so that's how many days rounded up. Mark that as answered. Go to the next one. And are the following functions. So in B9, we're going to type equals month of B4. B10 will be equals day. B4, year, hour, menu, second. Press F9 to recalculate the current date and time. So right now you see 23 and 15. So when I press F9, you see that it went to 23 and 26 to recalculate. Wait at least, this says to wait 60 seconds and press it again and note the changes as the current time changes. So 
I'm not going to wait that long, but you can wait as long as you want. And you see 23 and 26, and you press F9, and it automatically updates these. So let's mark that as answered. And go to the next one. Select cell B16. And we're going to enter date, parentheses, B11, comma, B9, comma, B10, in parentheses. And you see there's our date. Your, it'll be whatever your current date is. Step two says go back to select that cell. And we're going to type equals today, starting parentheses, in parentheses, and press enter. It's just another way to get it. Mark that as answered. Go to the next one. Select cell B17. And we're going to type equals date value. And it, it says, says where YYMMDD is the date you entered in B3 at the beginning of the exercise. So I entered August 26th of the year 2026. So I'm going to type quotation mark. I'm going to type 2026. You'll type whatever you did. Dash month. Mine was August, which is the eighth month. Dash. And I use the 26th. In parentheses. And then in. The result is a number which is a serialized date value. You can change the format to a date. Click cell B17 again. And then on the home tab of the number group, click the number format drop down button and click sort short date. So right here in the number, right here, we're going to click this down arrow and short date. And you can see that it changed it to that. Obviously, yours will be different depending on what date you selected. Select cell B18. Enter equals days, parentheses, B17, comma, B16, in parentheses. You see that that's the number of days between those dates, which you see up here is the same number. The workday function is useful in business situations for performing date calculations, but weekends and holidays must be excluded. Examine cell B5. If it's a Saturday or Sunday, change the travel departure date so that B5 is a weekday. Well, mine's a Wednesday, so I don't have to change anything. Select cell B20. And enter the number of days currently displayed in 8B18. Do not enter a formula that references B18. So I'm going to type 1763. You'll type whatever your number is. Select cell B21. And we're going to enter equals workday. B16, comma, B20, comma, B22, colon, B23, in parentheses. And that's the number of work days. Select cell B17. Then on the home tab in the clipboard group, click the format painter button once. Click cell B21. And it copies the formatting for that cell. At this point, B21 shows a date that is much later than the travel departure date showing in cell B17 and B3. This is caused by the number of days value in B20, which should count only the number of working days difference from today to the departure date. 
Cell B18 shows the total number of days including weekends. Note, if your week de weekend days are not Saturdays and Sundays, use the Workday International function to specify other dates of the week, which ours is. So change the number in cell B20. so that the date in B21 is the same as the date showing in B17. You can estimate this number by multiplying the number in B18. Got to get you a calculator out. So my number in B18 is 1763 times 0.714. So my number is, hmm, 1763 times 0.714, 12.58. Let me round it up, 12.59. All right, so enter a date in cell B22. This date should be a date between today and the travel departure date in B17 and B3. It must also be a weekday between Monday and Friday. Okay, I'm going to type, uh, let's see, 11.00. Day date into B23. By specifying two holiday dates, you can include as many holidays as needed in the cell range. The workday function will automatically adjust its calculations. So everything would have adjusted as we entered those. So let me mark this as answered. Go to the next one. I'm a little confused. I'm sure you are too. You will calculate the day of the week in which the nearest working day date you calculated previously falls. Select cell C21 and enter equals weekday parentheses B21 comma 1 in parentheses. Cell C21 displays a number of corresponding to the day of the week. The worksheet now should appear similar to the following, which mine appears similar. Let me mark that as answered. Submit. Fingers crossed for nine green checks. And there we go. So this completes using date and time functions.